All right, hello everyone, Terry here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to go ahead and change your engine oil in a BMW Z3. Now this video is gonna be mostly geared towards do-it-yourselfers who are new to working on cars and you don't already know how to change your oil. Uh, so sit back, take notes, and uh, let me show you how. When it comes to changing your motor oil, one of the first things you will need to do is identify the correct type of oil for your car. And just keep that in mind. Every vehicle and manufacturer is going to have their own rating system for the type of oil that's going to go into your car. So let me go ahead and show you some places where you can look to identify what is the proper oil for your vehicle. One of the primary places to find out where to look for your oil type is to check your owner's manual. And if you see here, it tells me to only use BMW High Performance Synthetic Oil. It's BMW. They want me to use BMW stuff so they can charge me more. I don't have to use BMW. I just got to make sure I have the right grade. Now, we also have right here, they're going to tell me that I need to use a 5W40 or a 5W30 uh, oil. Now, depending on where you live, this is going to be on what you're going to want to use. Now, if you live up in the colder climates and it's winter time, you're not going to want to use the 5W40. It's going to be too thick and a little harder for your car to start on those really, really cold days. So you're going to want to go with the 5W30. I live down in the south where it's always warm and it gets really hot in the summer. So I'm going to be putting the 5W40 in mine uh, just so that way it'll be a little bit better for me when it comes to the heat down here. Uh, I did the research and the car needs the rating. BMW has their long life rating or the LL1. You have to use that. Now that rating system no longer exists. This is what it was back in like 2001 is when my car was manufactured. So they had the long life one. I think they're up to like long life four or five now. But uh, you got to just find the right type of oil. And then, of course, do your research, find out all of your torque specs. I always write mine down in my manual so that every time I have to do maintenance, I already have it handy so that way I'm good to go. And uh, so you go. So we need the long life one. Other places you can check is usually right somewhere within underneath the uh, engine bay. They'll usually have a label somewhere telling you what kind of oil to use. And right here, once again, they're telling me to use BMW High Performance Synthetic. And they also have the part number there as well. I'm not going to use BMW brand oil because they pretty much charge you about $40 a quart. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Another uh, way you can do is check the filler cap. And right here at BMW, it recommends cash roll on the filler cap right here. Now, you're going to want to still double check on what you want to use. You don't have to use this brand of oil if you do not want to. This is just at the time... Castro had the best oil that was approved by BMW, so that's what they had at the time. Uh, this was like 20 years ago, and I checked. And if you even look at the back of a lot of the Castro oil, they no longer have the uh, BMW approved ratings on a lot of their oils uh, currently. So you're going to want to be very careful if you want to stick with Castro to make sure you're getting the right ones. So that's where you can go and find out what kind of oil you wanted to use. Now, I went ahead and already picked up what I wanted. I'm going to bring that over here. All right, so I'm a Valvoline fan myself. I am not in any way uh, sponsored with them, but uh, I prefer Valvoline products. So I went ahead and I got the European vehicle. Right here it says it's for BMW. I got my 5W40. All right, so make sure you have that. And then, or 30, depending on what your car needs. And then you always, before you purchase oil, check the back and they're going to have all your different ratings and things and if you look right here in the back BMW long life zero one and that's what I want so this is the perfect oil for my car so we're gonna go ahead and put that in and uh, this car should take around seven quarts so I got the uh, the five quart as well as uh, two little you know individual quarts as well to uh, do the job so that's how you identify the right oil. After you go ahead and identify the proper oil for your vehicle, you then need to figure out what is the proper type of oil filter that your vehicle takes. And there are different types of filters out there. You have the uh, 
common ones that many people are going to be familiar with that are basically like the, the this metal like tube that screws in and those are located underneath the engine um, but uh, BMW actually uses these cartridge filters so they'll look like this and the one that we need is this one. I got the man filter brand and we got uh, the HU 925 4X and it does say BMW on there so this is the proper one and it should also come with some uh, 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 some gasket like o-rings right in here as well as there's an extra uh, washer there for your drain plug to replace as well so you can make sure you have that now the owner's manual does not specify at least my owner's manual doesn't specify the proper oil filter so this is where you will have to go and do some research to find out uh, which one is recommended for your vehicle and there's lots of different brands out there also if you are looking to you could also join car enthusiast groups on Facebook and things of, of the sort uh, to find people who have the exact same vehicle you have and they will be able to recommend all the best parts and supplies to do general maintenance and uh, things of that sort so make sure you get the correct filter once you have the correct oil and the correct filter then you gotta make sure you know where you're putting your oil as where is your filter going so clearly at the filler cap here this is where we will go and put the new oil in once we get it all drained out on the Z3 this is your oil filter housing right here uh, you'll need a special tool to open this it's a 36 millimeter tool right here that you can it'll sit right on here and then you can put your uh, socket wrench on there to remove the cap uh, I got a nice heavy duty a metal one uh, they do sell cheaper like plastic ones if you're just gonna do this you're not gonna be doing this very often you want to save a couple bucks or just do it like the one time or something you can get the cheap plastic but if you're gonna be taking care of the vehicle for you know a long on the long term I do recommend getting a good sturdy metal one that will uh, that will last you so make sure you get the so make sure you also get the correct tool and the size will vary depending on the type of vehicle that you're using Another nice feature is on top, it actually tells you the torque spec on here. This isn't going to be on all vehicles, but on here it does mention how many newton meters uh, you need to torque it. So it says 25 newton meters is the torque spec when it comes to retightening that, and that will translate to 18 pound feet. Next is underneath the car. Now, if you're not doing a BMW and you're just using this video as a reference for changing oil on a different uh, maker model vehicle your it's possible that your filter could be screwed in underneath the engine and that will should be found close to where your drain plug is let's go underneath the engine real quick so I can show you where the drain plug is so once you're underneath the car you want to identify where the oil pan is and right here is the drain plug for that and if you're not really familiar on um, what that could look like just look for where the engine and the transmission connect and your oil pan is going to be right there so that way you're not looking at any other parts of the engine identify the oil pan and there's your drain plug you might have like a filter underneath here that you would screw out if you're using a different make of vehicle and then for the BMW Z3 you need a 17 millimeter socket to fit right on that drain plug all right let's get started with this change now you're going to want to be able to jack up your car so that you can get underneath the vehicle to access the drain plug I already got mine lifted up I got it on jack stands and I also keep some uh, blocks underneath the wheel so that way if something was to fail safety first I want to make sure the car isn't going to go completely all the way down to the ground to give me hopefully enough clearance uh, to get out of the out of the way safety first also you're gonna need some sort of drain pan to pour the old oil into so make sure you have one of those you're also going to need a funnel to get yourself a funnel so when it comes time to put the new stuff in you can have a it can be a lot cleaner getting it in so you have to worry about spillage 
Uh, in my case, once I removed that drain plug under there, I went ahead and I bought a replacement drain plug that's magnetic. Now, you don't have to do this. Being that this is a 27-year-old vehicle, and I don't know who's been doing the oil changes on this car before I owned it, if, for whatever reason, if they were taking this car to, like, quick, like, the 10-minute oil change places, there's a good chance that the drain plug could be cross-threaded, stripped, things of that sort, so you would have to replace it anyway. So... I want to just take it out and get rid of it, but I also want to have the magnetic one so that way if there is any metal shavings in the engine that are getting cycled through with the oil, they can get trapped on here so the next oil change we can extract that stuff as well. So I'm going to be switching over to that. And I did go ahead and write that size down if you need to replace your drain plug. It's an M12 by 1.5 thread size. So just in case you do need to replace yours or if you want to get the magnetic one as well. All right, so what you want to do is if you haven't ran your car at all yet for the day, turn it on, let it run for a little bit to warm up the oil so that way it flows real good, but don't get it to operating temperature, otherwise it's going to be too hot. Now, I had to go run out and buy some of my uh, fluids that I needed for all the changes I'm doing today, so I had to wait a while for my car to cool down. But it should be pretty good now to where I'm not going to have to worry about getting any burns. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to put on some gloves. So go under there and get the drain plug going. We'll drain all the old oil out. And, we'll, and then uh, we can worry about being on top. So let me go ahead and put these on. I don't want to get oil over my hands because it gets kind of messy under there. All right. And once you're ready to go underneath the car, also don't forget to also get some sort of eye protection. Whenever you're underneath a vehicle, it's always going to have eye protection because there's dirt and fluids and things that could drip into your eyes. So just protect yourself. Wow, this is tight. I got a breaker bar. Sometimes people over tighten these. The heat itself can make these pretty tight. So let's see. I'll try this again. All right. There we go. Good old breaker bar. I'm making sure to stay far off to the one side so that way when it pours out, I'm not going to get it on me. I want it to pour away from me. So I'm going to try to pull this out as quickly as I can so it's not just pouring down my hands. And there we have it. And then there should be like a little washer as well. Those you want to replace. My oil filter comes with a new one. But since I'm replacing the uh, drain plug all together. I'm not going to need that one. All right, now he's going to let all that pour out. And I'm happy I wore gloves. <laughs> now, if it's not pouring out real well, you could also loosen the drain, uh, the, the filler cap, and that will help with uh, the flow as well. But this is coming out really well because it was nice and warm. So I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm pulling this back because as it slows down, it's going to move this way. All right. All right, and that's pouring in there quite well. It's almost all gone. Now that's almost out, let's go ahead and loosen the filler cap, and that should also help release some pressure. Help it flow a little better. It's all coming out. That's some dirty looking oil. All right, I'm gonna just set this on top to keep anything from getting in here. But I'm not gonna tighten it. Now you wanna do your oil changes. 
depending on how, the, how much you're using your vehicle. If it's a daily driver for work, every five to 7,000 miles, depending on, again, how much you're using it, uh, as well as the type of oil you're using. Cheaper oil, you're going to want to change it more frequently than if you get some really good high quality oil. If you're taking your car out on the racetrack, you're going to want to change your oil after every session. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare to take the filter out, which is also can be pretty messy. I got some paper towel here for drippage. I also have a bag to put the filter in for the time being. And what you'll do is make sure you always take your used oil filters. Doesn't matter what type of oil filter it is. Always take uh, your use oil filters and take them in with your old oil to like your local auto part shop so it can properly be disposed of there's a lot of oil in your filters so it needs to get disposed of do not put that in your trash can all right let's go ahead and put our 36 millimeter adapter on there i went ahead and got myself a little bit of an extension so i can clear the power steering reservoir and let's go ahead and loosen this up. If you're quick enough, you should be good. Okay, now the filter will be connected to the cap. All right, so I'm going to pull it out and try to flip it up as fast as I can and then wrap the paper towel around it. Oh, yeah, nailed it. <clears throat> I only had a couple drips. All right, but then here you'll see your old filter sitting in here. And you're going to have your O-ring that's right down here that you're going to be replacing. There's also two O-rings right up here that you, is also recommended to replace. Now, I was unable to find replacements. They didn't come with my filter. The, the main O-ring for the cap was with my filter, but they didn't include these two. Those you'll have to buy separately. And you're going to need a pick tool to easily remove these O-rings. I'm going to wrap it up and just tuck it in the bag for now. Oil is still coming out yet. So just keep an eye on it. And then just make sure you do not forget to put your drain plug back in before you start putting the clean oil in. Let's go ahead and replace the O-ring. All right, so you'll take your cap. And this is, like I said, you're going to need a pick tool. And you're going to want to try to pull off the seal right here try to get underneath it and then you'll be able to maneuver it up if you break it it's not a big deal you're literally putting a new one on all right and then there's the old o-ring all right, so then go ahead and take your new O-ring and get that on. You can get it started by hand. Looks like it'll go on just fine by hand. I won't need to worry about using the pick to put it on. Perfect. Sometimes you might need the pick to kind of get it on. And just make sure it's seated in the, that groove where you took the other one off. And then this part is good to go your filter and you're going to go ahead and slide on. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Pop it right in just like so.
All right. And then you will be able to come back over here. And you can put it in. Now, it is recommended as well to put some oil on it. Put a little oil in here to kind of get the filter kind of saturated. I'm going to just set it here for the moment because I have to get my drain plug in here first before I do that. I'll put a little bit of the new oil on the new filter and then put it in there. Go ahead and put your new drain plug in or your, if you're using the old one, put your new washer on it and put your drain plug back in and torque it to 18 pound feet and then you will be set with that before you start putting the oil in. Always make sure, double check and make sure you put that plug in. I've seen people, my father was one, he jumped in a good like four quarts of oil into his truck before he realized he put his drain plug back in. Huge mess. So yeah, please, always just double check, make sure it's in. All right, it's snug. Let me grab the torque wrench. And you want to do this at 18 pound feet. All right, I'm at 18. There we go, 18. All right, let's go ahead and pull all this stuff out from underneath. Clean up the area here. Anything that's got oil on it, just kind of give it a nice little wipe down. Try to keep things tidy the best you can. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean you should take care of it. Oh, I'm kind of grabbing where I've been putting my hands and stuff. I'll wipe that down real good. All right, beautiful. All right, let's go ahead. Now that the drain plug is put back in, let's go ahead and add a little oil to the new filter. There, just so that it can kind of saturate inside there. So when you go to put start it up for the first time, it's not just hitting a dry filter. All right, you can even pour some right into the housing too. After you pour oil on the filter, go ahead. And make sure you get some on that O-ring as well. There we go. Now we'll be good to go for tightening this up. Go ahead and tighten it on. All right, once it stops, get your torque wrench. The torque spec for the filler cap is the same as the drain plug, 18 pound feet or 25 Newton meters. 
and we got it. The next step is to add the new oil. Take off your filler cap, put in your funnel. All right, since I already had this one open, I'll put the cord in here. Keep your bottles because you're going to want to dump the used motor oil back into your bottles so you can take them into your auto parts store to get them disposed. And then after you pour one quart in, go back underneath and track and make sure it's not leaking out. And we are good, it's not leaking. All right, now we can add the rest. And like I said, this car will take seven quarts, close to seven quarts. So I already put one in. I'm going to use the big jug, which is five, and I'll put that in. And then I will grab the dipstick and check it before I add to the last one. And I still got, still got three quarts in this one. Put a little more in. I want to leave one quart in this bottle. And then check it so that way I also have two quarts on the outside of it. All right, so I have a quart left in this bottle, and then the other quart, so two quarts are left. Let's go ahead and check the, where we're at so we don't overfill. And grab your dipstick over here. Pull this out. We're going to clean it all off. So we know we're going to get an accurate reading. Now look at it while it's clean you'll have it's not going to be like a it's got this plastic end on here so how bmw does theirs they don't have like a flat metal piece that has like it labeled full and low what they do is they have a plastic piece and then it has these little grooves here all right this top groove is when you're full this bottom groove uh you're i believe a quart low and if you below this you're way too low like that's bad so you don't ever want to go below this bottom one and you want to be at this top one so let's go ahead put this back in pull it back out and you'll see it's below if it focus it's actually below this first one still and now I should be two quarts I should be two quarts low so if I go ahead and add that other quart it should be right at that bottom bar so I'll add that last quart And you'll see this nice, beautiful amber color of the new oil. Compared to the old stuff, it's just black. It's just black very very dark oil now this oil was changed three months before I bought the car and I'm changing the oil because first off I only put 2,000 miles on the car so the oil hasn't hit its mileage point but 
I put 2,000 miles on it in a whole year. <laughs> so being that it's been a year, I'm changing it because it's, you know, it's just, it's been old and it gets hot and humid and, you, you know, all kinds of uh, condensation can build up inside there. So it's good to flush that out as well as the vacuum leak that I used to have was making me run rich. So I want to make sure that if there's any f fuel mixed in, that that's all, so all cleaned out. So that oil is gone. Now we can go back over here. And if we check the dipstick again, it should show we are about a quart low. Clean it off and put it back in here. You can also start up the car to kind of get it to cycle through. All right, so right now it's showing the oil, it's showing that it's full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the engine so it can start pulling that oil through the engine and cycling it through, and then I'll check it again. And once it pumps it all in, I should be a quart low again. So let's go ahead, take this out. the oil cap on for a moment. There we go. Put that on. Clean up my mess. It's all over my gloves and some everything I touch I'm putting getting stuff on. Alright, so let's go ahead now. I'm gonna start the engine. Cycle that oil through and then we'll recheck our level before we add the final quart. Go and check the dipstick again. That way, the, it should have gotten cycled through. Clean it off first. And then, if you look at it, the oil's in the middle. We'll go ahead and we'll add that last quart, and we should be we should be set. Now, there's also O-rings on your dipstick that you could also replace if you notice that they're getting pretty uh, and pretty warm. And then, since I had the car running, wouldn't hurt to just check it one more time, see if there's any leaking. Now that we've had it build up some pressure. And uh, she's still super dry. Beautiful. All right, let's get the last of the oil in, and then this job is complete. All right, and then once you do that, it's good to just kind of let your bottle sit for a little while. Make sure you get everything out. There we go. Let that one sit, and then I'll do that with the other bottles. Make sure that I got as much oil out of them as possible, and then go ahead, clean up your tools, clean, and then you're going to want to use your funnels, and you're going to want to have a buddy if you can, because this is awkward to tip. Now there's different design drain pans, but you want to be able to carefully put this old this old engine oil into those bottles so you can take them in to be disposed. And there you have it. That's all you got to do. And then you just put your filler cap back on, and it's done. You have successfully done an oil change. All right, so after you get your filler cap put back on, that part is done and then normally this would be the end of the procedure when it comes to oil changes um, and then after that you'll have to do your reset for your your 
inspection and your oil gauge inside the car so that way it knows that you've just done uh, the maintenance so that way it's not still telling you that you're due for an oil change and for the Z3 there's this special tool right here that you can get on Amazon I'll link it in the description uh, you need this tool here you plug it in right here you take this part off here and this is what they had before they had the OBD2 is they had this and you have this little Pac-Man looking symbol just make sure it matches up right there and you'll plug this right in get that plugged in and then you're going to have these two buttons inspection and oil I'm going to show you what those are so you may have noticed in your Z3 you may have noticed that when you first turn on the key you'll have this light here now the green bars are for your oil and because I only put 2,000 miles on it it doesn't think I'm due for an oil change yet because I still have three of the five but I had told you all that uh, this oil has been in the car for a year so I had to do the change uh, so we went ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clear that so that way I'll get all five back you'll also sometimes have a yellow inspection here uh, so that that's letting you know that there's some sort of service due on the car and then uh, so you want to make sure you do that and I think there's a red one here if something really severe is going on we will have that I don't have a service engine light at all which is because I don't have the car turned on all the way that's on but uh, let's go ahead now that the uh, key is on and we will hit those buttons and those should go away hold it for like 10 seconds that goes off and then you do the oil and then that it went off pretty fast so let me go ahead and see if it fixed my so I'm gonna go ahead and start the car all right mine didn't reset so let me try it again I'm gonna try this again so you want to have the ignition on but do not start the car sometimes you have to do the inspection for the oil which is what I've been doing You can see, I still hit set right there. I'm going to try doing the oil by itself because I don't have the inspection light on. So let me just see if I can just do the oil by itself. Uh. Yeah, it's not resetting. Let me try again. There is a method where you can use a wire and plug it in and without the tool, but it's not recommended. Do the inspection light first. Oil. Try again. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't need the lights to reset, but I would like them to reset. I'd like to show you that it works. <laughs> Mine are not resetting for nothing. Yeah, it's not working. I've seen it work for other uh, YouTubers that use this tool, and it's not, it's not working. So try the tool, or you can do the hack with the wires. Just keep in mind that if you do the hack with just the wire, putting it in number 7, I think number 19, don't quote me. I think it's 7 and 19. Uh, it'll do the same thing, but you risk... There is risk of damaging stuff if you uh, if you do the hack with the wire, but there are a lot of videos on YouTube of people doing that hack, so use it at your own risk. Because as you can see, it's hit or miss with this tool working. Because mine sure doesn't want to work. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. Now you too know how to do an oil change, uh, and these steps will work for pretty much. Every single vehicle out there, there will just be differences on placement, oil types, and filter types, as well as filter placement, things of that sort. But otherwise, it's the same, you know, regardless of the vehicle. So 
go ahead and uh, knock yours out. And unfortunately, the reset tool didn't work for me, but you know, like I said, there are plenty of other YouTubers out there who demonstrate the tool as well as the hack, use at your own risk, uh, to, to reset the light if you care about that. I can live without it. I mean, I, I'll keep track of when I need my uh, fluids changed, so I'm not that worried about it. But uh, go ahead and try that if you want. I'll still link the tool. Maybe you'll have better luck with it. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be doing some more videos here with some other fluid changes. So make sure you go ahead and check those out if you're going to be doing some more maintenance on your Z3. And I'll catch you again real soon. Follow me on Instagram as well, Cool Cat Terry. And uh, until next time, take care, friends.